This is Radio 97. It's time for Talking Law on this Thursday morning. And as usual, our resident lawyer, Despina Priala of boutique law firm Priala Legal in Runaway Bay with us uh, to offer her legal expertise. She brings all of her years of knowledge and experience and uh, all the good things and bad things that have happened. In fact, she's going to tell some stories about that in coming weeks too. Looking forward to that. Uh, Of course, with her 25 years of experience in the area of property and commercial law, she also prepares wills as part of estate planning and litigation and a proverbial whole much more. Good morning to you, Despina. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning, Brooke. Good morning, Jasmina. So we'll kick off the show with some good news. Some regular, lovely listeners have been in touch, even more so than usual, over the past couple of weeks. And Jasmina, you want to give a little shout out to our friends listening in? I did. I wanted to say very quickly a nice shout out to Brendan at Monterey Keys. Now, Brendan listens to the show religiously (laughs) every week, as I found out yesterday from his mother, Rhonda. So hello to both of you and thank you for listening to the show and I I hope that you continue to enjoy it. And also Peter. So Peter is also an avid listener and Peter um, drives a cab on the Gold Coast and uh, I was in his cab coincidentally last year. Um, And, and, and yeah, we got to to, um, talking and and get to know each other and he reached out to me on social media recently. So thank you for doing that, Peter, and hello to you too. Yeah, morning, Peter. Good morning, Peter, Brendan and Rhonda. Thank you so much for listening to Talking Law every single week. We love it. Um, So today we'll just do a quick little recap um, going off our topic last week. So we spoke about the huge Novak Djokovic case, um, which was obviously in the news for the past couple of weeks, and we just wanted to clarify a few things in regards to the ministers involved, Despina. Yes, I just wanted to clarify that quickly. I think you had a listener ring up and wanted to seek some clarification or or mention about which minister we were talking about. So the original case, which was in the um, Federal Circuit Court, that was actually against the Minister for Home Affairs. That is correct. Um, And that's how the case was originally um, commenced. And it had to be commenced against that Minister for Home Affairs by Djokovic and his lawyers. So the reason why there was so much attention to the Minister for Immigration, of course, is that in the lead up to uh, whether um, Alex Hawke made that decision in the end to revoke the visa, there was about a week of it in the paper about will he or won't he. So his name was mentioned quite a lot. So um, the Minister for Immigration, of course, is the only minister that has the powers to cancel a visa under that section I talked about last week under the Migration Act. Um, And he stepped in at the last minute and made that decision and used his discretionary powers. And that is correct. It was the Minister for Immigration. But prior to that, of course, the Minister for Home Affairs was involved first. So I just thought I'd clarify that point for the listeners out there. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that, Despina. And moving forward, we'll also talk about the REIQ contracts. Again, we spoke about this last week because it did come into effect on the 20th of January. Um, so there was this was all with positive intentions. I think we can all agree, and that's why we're so excited to announce it on the show. But since then, um, there's been some negativity surrounding the changes, and for a pretty good reason. Um, so, Despina, what is your update in regards to the REIQ changes that happened last week? Yes, so there's been a bit of hype about it. And if you recall last week, we we talked about it because it was a news flash and it was commenced as of Thursday last week, the 20th, and we hadn't yet seen the contracts at that time. And now we've been able to see the REIQ contracts that have been released. But there's been articles um, all over social media about, is this going to be a good change? Uh, and there's a bit of uproar about no consultation with professional people like ourselves or other bodies about this particular change and, and how it was made. So um, let's go back a bit because I think we need to clarify some things for listeners and people out there under contract. So this particular change is only affecting contracts that started after the 20th, meaning if you were already under contract to sell or purchase property in Queensland, you already had your contract in place prior to the 20th. So I think a lot of people initially weren't sure about how it would affect them. Mm -hmm. So it only affected people who went under contract after the 20th, presuming that their actual agent used the updated REIQ contract, first of all. Um, so so just that's a practical issue. Um, and secondly, of course, there's an REIQ contract which has been amended as of the 20th, as we've talked about. But there is another form of contract in Queensland called an ADL contract. So um, just a little tip for people out there, when you are buying or selling at the moment, if it's an REIQ contract, it's got to be the 17th edition, which has the changes that we're going to talk about a bit more. Um, 
But if it's an ADL contract, it's not going to have these changes about the settlement date changing, which was the big issue um, that people have been talking about at social media over the last week Mm. and whether it was the right change or the wrong change. So it's only affecting the REIQ contracts. But the ADL contracts exist and they are still the exact same, no changes to them. So does that mean the REIQ contracts, are they a bit more popular, would you say? Um, Generally, yes. And it it really comes down to uh, which software the agents subscribe to at the end of the day. Um, And that's up to the agents. So both contracts can be used. But let's talk about this Uh, I suppose, can I call it a controversial issue? I don't know if it's controversial yet, but it's certainly raising some eyebrows about this change, and that is the extension of a settlement date change. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I think the, um, if I can say, I think the, the intention of giving this extension of a settlement date was to try and release... Uh, some pressure that does build up and mount up on the day of settlement as to whether everyone's going to be ready, but particularly the banks. So remember, this is change has been triggered by some sad stories last year, if you remember, about couples losing their deposits because their bank wasn't ready on the day of settlement and come that 4pm cutoff, they couldn't um, settle and the vendor terminated and took their deposit. And big deposits too. One of them was about 75,000, yeah. Absolutely. So make no mistake, this change to the settlement date was triggered by those stories. Now, um, the the REIQ, without consultation, yes, to the wider community and and professional bodies, made this change with the hope um, to try and have this as a stopgap measure. But, you know, time will tell as to whether it actually would do this. And I think or or the change wasn't intentional to give people a licence, perhaps to be um, a bit more, you know, blasé about, well, or um, selling dates coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, she's so yeah. polite, lazy <laughs> I know, guys. I know. You, They're being you lazy. Said not, <laughs> you said it, not me. So uh, you know, come settlement date, is this going to make people uh, work harder to get that settlement affected, or is it going to mean that people are going to be, as you say, slack? They're not going to be motivated knowing, oh, well, we can just give a notice. And the practical side, and it does concern me and my staff that. Well, we could get a notice at quarter to four on the day of settlement from the other party saying, sorry, we can't settle. We're going to invoke our unilateral right to extend this for up to five business days. And practically, it's really not going to make, for example, my client happy if he was a buyer or she was a buyer with their truck waiting to move in Mm, um, in the afternoon when we just get a notice saying, sorry, you know, can't settle. So there's no penalty for doing that, is there? If you, if you, uh, for whatever reason, you get towards four o'clock on the day of settlement and you think, Mm-mm, you know, it could be a bank issue, it could be all sorts of things, uh, we're not going to be able to settle at that time. We're going to take the extra five days. There's no penalty for taking those extra five days. No, there isn't. And, and I'm, from my perspective, I think perhaps if there was a consultation process about these changes, then maybe other people might have uh, offered suggestions. For example, from my perspective, um, there would be a couple of other changes that maybe could have uh, assisted. For um, One of those is we have a cutoff time of 4 p.m. Now, we used to have a cutoff time of 5 p.m. under the REIQ contracts and the ADL contracts, but that was changed a few years ago to 4 p.m., which I suspect had something to do with the banking industry. And really, um, we have some very real practical examples where we get to um, settlement and the bank is still not ready. And 4 p.m. comes and goes, oh, well, settlement can't be affected. And I kid you not, at 4.10 p.m., we have had banks say to us, we're ready. We can settle now. <laughs> yeah. So that wow. hour, so honestly, that hour could make all the difference. I think it could make all the difference. Yeah, Absolutely. Wow. And, and you mentioned penalties. That's a good point. So another suggestion perhaps could have been, if we were consulted, um, is that, well, uh, let's make it a little bit um, uh, uh, more of a motivation to meet that deadline for settlement by imposing a penalty if you do invoke this notice to extend, similar in New South Wales, um, when it could be a small penalty like $200 or $300 or, or whatever they might impose to say, look, if you have to extend, extend, but there's going to be a penalty charged um, and adjusted at settlement for that penalty. And I think that would have been a good motivator to be honest to to still meet that settlement deadline Mm, it sounds like perhaps after this has been going for a little while there might be a few changes adjustments yeah Mm. i think so so they're going to wait and see what happens over the next six months um, and whether this uh, change will actually work 
or not. And I do understand the intention behind it, but I don't know if this change will actually achieve it. Only time will tell. Well, our fingers on the pulse here on Talking Law. We'll keep you updated as it unfolds. You're listening to Radio 97 with Despina Priala. And coming up next, Queensland unit dwellers could be barred from smoking on balconies. Is that the case in terms of the law? Stay tuned. We have Despina Priala coming up next on Talking Law with all the details.